Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we had discussed as to how to construct a construction grid. In this video, we will see the properties of a construction grid and how it can help us to generate our structural models easily. Of course, in this series, we will be dealing mostly with planar structures, so doing a construction grid will not always be necessary. But this will really start adding more and more value as the structures starts getting more and more complex. But before proceeding on anything, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Stack. Now let us look back at the construction grid that we had created in our last session. Remember that we are viewing this construction grid in isometric view. Now, if you hover your mouse over the construction grid, you would see that the program snaps at the intersection of the construction lines. If you click on any one of the intersection points, a node is immediately created at that point. But before we do that, let us look at a few other aspects. One thing to notice is that in case you are hovering your mouse over the construction grid, and you do not see uh, the interse intersection points being snapped as being shown on the screen. You just need to go and activate this snap node beam cursor. You just need to click on this. So this is a toggle option. So if I actually click on this now, you see that it has stopped snapping um, uh, over the construction grid. But if I go again and click on this, it will again start uh, snapping on the, the various intersection points. So in case, as I've said that, in case you see that uh, you are trying to do this and it's not snapping at the intersection points, just you need to go and click on the snap node beam button over here. Now, the other thing that um, uh, I just wanted to draw your attention to is this small semicircle here. Could you see this? Uh, there is a small semicircle over here which indicates that this is the origin of the grid. Now, if you remember that our origin of the grid uh, or our grid origin was uh, at the global coordinate system 000, zero, zero or was at the global axis origin. Now, if you actually go and click on, right click, go to labels and uh, just activate uh, this option called show axis at origin, you would see that it is exactly where the grid origin is because that's exactly how we had created it, right? Now let us let us um, deactivate the origin view from from the screen. So click on apply. Okay. So now the um, uh, the axis view is gone. Now. Uh, let us now try and view this grid from the plus Z direction. So we go to the view option and click on front view. And now you are able to see uh, this whole construction grid in the XY plane. So now let us try and see based on what we have explained, what is the type of grid that we would obtain. So this, say this is the grid origin. Okay, so this point is 0, 0, 0, and we will have five divisions on the right and five divisions on the left. So we'll have, so let us, so let this be the grid origin. Okay, so this is the grid origin at coordinates of 0, 0, 0, and we will have five divisions. So this is one division, this is two division, three, four, and 5. Similarly, we will have 5 divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the left. Now, now, so we have 5 divisions on the right and 5 divisions on the left. And as I have said that we will not have any divisions below the origin along the y-axis. So this is along the x-axis, right? The divisions are along the x-axis. 5 to the right, 5 to the left. No divisions below, along the y-axis, so this is the x-axis. And for 
along the y-axis, we won't have any divisions below the grid origin, but we'll have 10 divisions along the y-axis above the grid origin. So we'll have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, now also the spacing between the spacing of the divisions, like this one is 1 meter. These are all 1 meter divisions. 1 meter, 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 1 meter. And we have the divisions along the y axis will be 0.5 meters. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So these are the divisions. Now the grid would be obtained like this. So basically we have a line joining them here and a line joining here. We'll have the vertical lines like this. You have to remember what a grid is by the way. The grid is nothing but uh, these are imaginary lines. These are not actual lines. These are imaginary lines that are Defined to to help us create the model. So, and these will be the horizontal lines, right? So, these will be the horizontal lines like this. So, this is how the grid would look like. So, we'll having five divisions at one meter spacing to the right, five divisions, one meter spacing to the left. No divisions below the grid origin and 10 divisions above the grid origin at 0.5 meter spacing. So, something like this that we'll get. Excuse my drawing, that's uh, not very accurate, uh, but I think you get the idea here. So, the distances here are 1 meter each, right? And Similarly, the divisions here are 0.5 meters, all of them. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and so on, till here. So, so you basically get the idea, like how these parameters relate to the grid that I have drawn on the board. So, now we will see how we will create the construction grid in Stat Pro in the Stat Pro environment. Now, the grid lines are assumed to uh, start uh, from the bottom for the vertical grid lines. So, for say for example, this vertical grid line, the start would be this, the end would be this. Okay, and for the horizontal grid lines, the start would be uh, from the left. And the end would be on the right. So if this is the line that we are considering, this would be the start of that line, and this would be the end of that line. So this would be the start zone. Okay, the start zone of vertical grid lines. Okay, this is the start zone of the vertical grid lines, and this is the end zone of the vertical grid lines. Okay, and for the horizontal grid lines, this would be the start zone. And uh, so this would be the start zone for horizontal grid lines and this would be the end zone for the horizontal grid lines okay so <clears throat> I will actually show you 
um, uh, while working in STAN, like how we can display entities at the start and the end of the construction line. Okay, so for that it is very important to know what would be the start of a construction grid line or construction grid line and what would be the end of the construction grid line. The other thing that <coughs> you want to understand is, now notice that uh, this point here, okay, the grid for the grid that we have created, this point is the grid origin, okay, and in our case, this is, the coordinates are 0, 0, 0. So this is nothing but uh, the grid origin. The, uh, this is nothing but the grid origin. And so this is grid origin and is located at coordinates 0, 0, 0. <coughs> now, so what would be the coordinate of this point? This, because it is situated at a one meter spacing, right? So, now since this point, x coordinate, now this is the, along the x axis, right? So, when you go into stat, you will see that by default, the x coordinates of, of all the points here is being displayed and the y coordinates of all the points here would be displayed. So, let us try and understand what would be the x and y coordinates that we would see in stat. So let us say, now this point, as I have said, is 0, right? This point is 0. So, <clears throat> now since the x coordinate of this point is 0, so this is located towards the right of that. Uh, so it would be positive 1. So plus 1 would be, or you do not need to mention the plus, it's just one. So this, since it's a one meter spacing towards the right, and this point is one meter spacing, one meter towards the right of this point, so the x coordinate would be two here. Similarly, the x coordinate for this point would be three, the x coordinate for this point would be four, and the x coordinate for this coordinate uh, of this point would be five. Now, this being located, these points being located to the left of the origin, the x coordinate of this point would be minus 1, the x coordinate of this point would be minus 2, this being minus 3, this being minus 4, and this being minus 5. Now, let us represent the y coordinates of these vertical points. Now, what would be the y coordinates of these vertical points? The y coordinate of this point is 0 because this is located, this line is along the grid origin. So, the y coordinate of this point is 0. So, let us represent that in red ink. So, this would be 0. And remember that these are all above the grid origin. This is the grid that we have just defined. So these are all about the grid origin. So we will have all positive values. Now, if there were divisions below the grid origin, then we would have the negative y coordinates as well. But in this case, we won't have them. This point is zero. And remember what was the spacing? 0.5 meters. So this point would be, the y coordinate of this point is 0.5. All the dimensions are in meters, okay? This one would be one, because 0.5 plus 0.5 would be one this point would be 1.5, right? So 0.5 plus 0.5 plus 0.5, 1.5. Similarly, th this point would be 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5. Now, this is exactly when you go and look at the grid that we have just defined in STAD, you would see that by default, the grid would look exactly like what I have <coughs> shown here. Okay, now based on that, uh, we will show a few other display options that uh, we can bring up uh, on the grid. But this is the default view. And I just wanted to explain the default view so that when you see that in staff,
it does not confuse you. So this is exactly what we see on the screen. However, we can change the displays of the coordinate system. If you want to display both X and Y coordinates of the intersection points, you can click on both X and Y here to display the same. For example, along the X direction, if you want to display both the X and the Y coordinates, you would need to click on this Y button here. You could see that X button is on, switched on by default. So if you click on the Y button, you'd see that along with the X coordinates now, the Y coordinates are also displayed at the start of the vertical lines along the X axis. Similarly, along the Y axis, if you want to display the X coordinates besides the displayed Y coordinates, uh, you would need to activate this button X and you would see that both X and Y coordinates are being displayed at the start of the horizontal lines along the Y axis. Now, you can choose to display the Z coordinates if you like, though it's a planar structure, so that won't mean anything. This would all just be represented as zero. So I have switched on the, uh, the Z coordinates as well. Now you can see that the Z coordinates are being displayed, um, but it's not really necessary for plane structures. So I again switch that off. The other thing that you can do is that you can choose to display the coordinates at the end of the lines as well. Now you can see that here um, the coordinates are being represented at the start of the vertical and the horizontal lines. So if you want to uh, have this being displayed at the end of the lines, all that you need to do is to go over here and select end and select end. And you can see that instead of the start of the lines, the coordinates are now being displayed at the end of the lines. You can even choose to show it on both the start and the end. So you need to click on the both option and you see that it is being represented at both the start and the end of the lines. Or you can even choose not to show anything. So there is a none option here. So you could just select this and you can see that nothing is being displayed. So we go back to our default view of showing this at the start. And um, we just want to have the X coordinates displayed along the X axis. So switch off Y and the Y coordinates displayed along the Y axis. So we switch off X. Now this, is, this was our uh, default view. You can also choose to show the axis IDs by checking on this box called the axis IDs, which would show X coordinate or Y coordinate. So if you again switch on uh, the Y coordinates uh, for uh, the coordinates along the X axis and X coordinates for coordinates along the Y axis, you can see that uh, the IDs or the reference axis uh, is mentioned. So this would mean that for example, here, if you look at this point here, this would mean that the x minus 1 means x coordinate is minus 1, y 0 would mean y coordinate is 0. Okay, so you can display the axis IDs if you would like to. Um, if you actually click on the reference coordinates, it would also uh, display uh, the values as plus or or minus. Uh, you know, minus was displayed by default, but you know, the plus, to show the plus values, uh, you could uh, just switch on the reference coordinates. But these are not really necessary for uh, your day to day work. So I switch off the reference coordinate and the axis IDs. Now let us click on one, on, or one of the snapped um, points, uh, intersection points, and you would see that. A node is immediately created by default, and uh, there is uh, a beamline 
uh, that follows uh, <coughs> the mouse cursor. Now, if I click on another intersection point, you'd see that uh, the node, another node is created at that point and the beam is complete, but <coughs> we are, uh, but then uh, the another beam line is following the, uh, the mouse cursor. So if you wish to create another beam, you could uh, like click on uh, the end, click for the end node of that particular beam. Uh, on any intersection point and another beam is created. Now this would continue but if you would wish to uh, stop the creation of beams and nodes all that you need to do is you can hit the escape from the keyboard or you can go to this snap node of op beam option and uh, switch off uh, this toggle switch. So this would stop the creation of the nodes and beams by default. But you could see how easily we could have created the node points and the beams using the construction grid. Now, if the construction grid is suited to our requirements, uh, to the specific structural model that we are trying to create, then it adds a lot of value and saves a lot of time in creating the structural model. If you wish to start the start to um, uh, create the nodes and the beams again, you can again hit the snap node beam option and you could start the process all over again. Say I want to add a column over here, I want to add a column over here, I could click over here and here the column is created. Now I need to switch off this, take my mouse over to this point click on the snap node beam option again, take it over to this particular point and create the second column. And again, switch off this. And we have, uh, we would have the model that we wanted to create, um, created with the help of the construction lines. So this probably gives you an idea as to how the construction lines could be important. Now let us try to make a sense of uh, the coordinates of the various nodes that has been created <clears throat> during this process. So let us go to the select option and select the nodes cursor. And um, if we hold over this particular node, you could see that the node number is one. Now from here, we can definitely see what, we can make out what the node coordinates are. Basically, you remember that the grid origin is over here and the grid origin was at the position of the global axis origin at 0, 0, 0. So three and each division was one meter along the X axis and 0.5 meters along the Y axis. So if this one would be, as you could see, minus three. So node one, the X axis um, or the X coordinate would be minus three. The Y coordinate would be 1.5. Remember that the division along the Y axis was 0.5 meters. So 1.5 would be the coordinates of this particular node number one. So if we double click on this node, you could see that this is exactly the case. The X coordinate is minus three, the Y coordinate is 1.5. Similarly for node number two, if we hold our mouse over this node, you can see that this is node number two. And you could see that the X coordinate would be zero, the Y coordinate would be three, if you double click on this node, you can see that the X coordinate is indeed zero and the Y coordinate is three. Similarly for node number three, you could see that the X coordinate is two and the Y coordinate is two as well. So if you double click on this for the nodes uh, query box, you can see that X is two and Y is two. Similarly, <coughs> this would hold for the other nodes um, that we have created as well. Now, since we have created this model, the requirement of this construction grid is over. But um, <clears throat> there, are, there are, so you can switch off this construction grid. Now, if you wish to retain this snap node beam over box over here, you can just switch off uh, this checkbox besides the grid one option and uh, the grid would be gone and you could see the model uh, without the grid. 
However, in our case, we do not want uh, this box either because uh, our work with the construction grid is over. So we can switch off this box altogether. And you could see that uh, the node coordinates and the beam incidences has been created in their respective places. Now, if I go to the text editor and we would see that whatever we have defined using the construction grid has been registered in the text editor as well. So now we have understood the properties and the utilities of a construction grid. And we will use this construction grid to model the goalpost frame in the next episode. So I hope you have liked what I have discussed today. So if you have, please do hit the like button and please hit the bell icon for more notifications from this channel. See you in the next video. Till then, bye.